In this video, I'm going to talk about running multiple machines at the same time, vector node editing, engraving three times faster by not using Lightburn, and a few other surprises. Xtool has some new features for their Creative Space software that I want to talk about, and whether you have the F1, S1, P2, or any other Xtool machine, this video is for you. I'm using the beta version in the software, but you should expect to see these updates pretty soon. I'll be referencing the P2 and S1 machines, which are right over there. And this is the F1 that Xtool sent me a while back. It's an infrared and diode laser, but they just announced a new F1 Ultra. The F1 Ultra is a massive 20 watt fiber laser, which is in pre-release. In this video, I'll give you some more details on how you can get a discount on that machine. This video isn't a review of those machines, but I do reviews on this channel. So if you're interested in those, check those out. All of these lasers can operate using Lightburn, which is pretty much an industry standard for most lasers. But what I wanna show you is why you don't need to pay that extra $120 for that software. If you're used to using Lightburn, when you open up the earlier versions of XCS, it kind of feels like you're navigating through the options of a DVD player, but not anymore. The software I'm talking about is known as XCS for Xtool Creative Space. One of the first updates that I want to talk about is with XCS 2.0, you can operate multiple machines from a single interface, making it easy for you to use P2 and F1 at the same time, or your S1 and P2, or the new F1 Ultra and the F1. Whatever combination you want to do, you really can do it. You can manage all of your connected machines from one single interface. There's no more juggling between different software or control panels. This makes everything simpler and ensures that your machines operate consistently. That will reduce your downtime and maximize the output that you're putting out of your shop. Now, if you're a hobbyist doing one or two small projects, this probably isn't gonna be that much of an upgrade to you, but if you've got a big order to fulfill, this is a huge upgrade. Also, another great thing is that even if you're not running multiple machines simultaneously, you can still have those jobs open and saved to your profile so you can run them quickly. XCS 2.0 allows you to customize settings for each machine according to your needs, whether it's adjusting processing speeds, power levels, or material settings. You can do all of that with this new software update. You can keep tabs on your machines in real time. You can monitor your job progress, track the machine status, and even receive alerts for any issues or errors that you may have. Before we move on, I should comment on the interface. I think that the system looks a lot better and it's a lot more user-friendly than previous versions. Okay, so here I'm actually in the system right now, uh, but you can easily go back to the home page by selecting the home button. And you, you'll see a bunch of different options here. So if you want to create a project, you can just go up to a new project, or if you have one that's saved, you can just go to your open from computer. So uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit uh, new project. And here you can keep track of different tabs. So it, it works a lot like a web browser uh, where you can have different machines connected, like I mentioned before. So here I've got the F1 connected, but if I wanna go over and I wanted to connect my P2, I could do that by using the drop down here. You can go into retitle this. So if I wanted to rename this, uh, I could do that. I could just be like F1 test two and hit save and then you can easily see which tabs you're working on. Uh, so you can keep track of your, your tabs from, from projects to the Xtool projects, uh, which is really handy for multitasking. You can stay up to date with any of the uh, updates that come through the system. There's this bell notification. You can check out your different settings for your device, your system, the app. Um, it's really gonna give you uh, any updates that you need to see. Uh, so if you wanted to see the update here on the new generative AI, uh, you could just select that button and it will tell you all about it. You can customize XCS to your liking. Uh, you can adjust the unit preferences, the language settings, and uh, there's a lot of different things that you can do. So I would just suggest once you get 2.0, just go in there and try to play around a little bit. Uh, and I'm only gonna cover a few of the different uh, changes that they have put in that I really think um, I find value in. You can stay organized with your different tabs and under each tab, like you see, I've already created a different canvas. So I had this one here, uh, but if I wanted to run you know, multiple tags, let's say, 
I could be running this job and then I can go in and have another job that I'm prepping while the other one is running. So that's what's really convenient about being able to switch between the different tabs. Okay, so here's an update that I really love. It's called Smart Auto Path Planning. I never thought that I'd say it, but I don't even miss Lightburn with this update. Just wait till I show you the time difference between Lightburn and XCS. So here's how it works. Once you upload your design, you can use the Smart Auto Path Planning and it will analyze it. Then it automatically calculates the most efficient toolpath for cutting and engraving. It considers things like uh, the complexity of the material uh, properties, and it's just going to reduce the amount of work that your machine has to go through. And so therefore it's gonna be a faster runtime. And so this is where it gets a little bit better than Lightburn. It's smart enough to minimize the unnecessary machine movement, which not only saves you time, but it also reduces the wear and tear on your equipment. So you get faster results and your machine will last longer. If you make changes to your design or switch materials, Smart Auto Path Planning adjusts tool paths automatically to maintain the uh, efficiency and the quality. And this is actually very easy to use. So this section over here is the processing path. And right now it's set to auto planning, which is what I would recommend you use pretty much every time, unless there's a certain order that you want to do things in. And then you can go into the user defining one and you can select, you wanna do everything all together or one by one. And there's a couple different options here. You can do it by layer and you can use the smart uh, planning also within that user defined section. Uh, but for most jobs that I've uh, tested, I just use the auto planning and I did a comparison between uh, Lightburn and between XCS. So here's those results. Let's talk about node editing, a feature that gives you full control over your designs. This is something that's available in Lightburn. And in my opinion, it's a must have if you're doing any design work that needs to be cleaned up. To do this, you can start with either a vector where the nodes are already editable, or you can input an image and trace the paths to create an editable vector. Uh, editable or edible? No, editable. Editable is a difficult word. If the lines aren't exactly where you want them or there's some noise because image quality isn't great, well, now you can select those different points, those individual points, and edit them just like you would with Adobe Illustrator or with Lightburn. So here I've got the outline selected and I can go edit node and you're gonna see all these individual points pop up. So this is already a SVG or a vector uh, that show me what is editable. So I can go in and select an individual node, let's say, uh, and I can change the type to make it curved. Um, let me undo that. Uh, or I can take it and drag it and change it that way. I'm gonna undo that. Uh, or you can add in different nodes as well. So let's say I wanted to, I don't know why I would do this, but let's say I wanted to drag this out and make a little box or something like that. You can do that. So it's really a, a nice way for you to be able to change things. Let's say you've got an image, a graphic uh, that is, is pretty skewed uh, and you really wanted it to be a nice clean uh, shape. You can go in and change the nodes using this node editing feature. So nodes aren't just points, they also define curves in your design. So by adjusting the position of the nodes and their control handles, you can fine tune those curves and achieve a, a smooth flowing line or precise angles. So like if I go in here and I say, I wanna make this a, and here's the different options. Uh, if you want to do perfect symmetry, if you want to do asymmetry, and if you want an angled symmetry. So let's go with asymmetry because I wanna be able to manipulate this. Uh, and again, it's just using the different node points. Uh, you can add in node points. That one is, uh, I can change this, make that also asymmetrical. And you have total control over everything. Uh, you just are gonna need to learn to use the handles uh, and make different shapes this way. So you can see how you can totally customize things the way that you want to just by using node editing. I'm gonna undo all that because that is super ugly. And once you're done with your node editing, you can just go ahead and hit done 
and it's gonna bring you right back to this screen and you're ready to run your project. One feature that I mentioned in my We Create laser review had to do with seeing the engraving, what it would look like before you started your job. I've been a big fan of running speed and feed tests before engraving anything, but sometimes you don't have the ability to run a test because you've only got one of whatever that you're wanting to engrave. And some people who have seen some beta reviews out there already on this XCS 2.0 said, oh, they just copied WeCreate. Well, you know what, honestly, I don't care because the XCS software is much better than the WeCreate software, especially with this upgrade. So let's check it out. Let's see what it's about. Now x incorporated this feature into their software and has had multiple beta testers input a really wide variety of materials so you can see how the different settings will come out on your material before you engrave. So if I just go in here and let's say I want to, th there's all these different options here. You can kind of see little, little like images of how they would look. Uh, like if you have a stone coaster, a wood coaster, cherry plywood, etc. But let's say you don't, you're not sure if that material is there or you can't find what you're looking for. Well, they have this here. It's just one click button uh, that you can come in and you see they've got a def bunch of different options in here. Uh, you can select, you know, phone cases and there's a lot of X tool uh, proprietary kind of material settings in here as well. But let's say uh, that I was going to do this engraving on uh, Birch, let's say. Now I've already checked this out. Birch wasn't an available option. So then what I need to do is I would need to go something similar. So maybe like a pine. So I can check out pine and you see there's already generated a bunch of options in there. Uh, but I can just pick something that is close to color as what I'm using. So let's say I'm gonna use a six millimeter pine plywood for that option. And then here is where you can select which machine that you're going to use. Uh, and this is really great because it, it just really gives you a template of what you are going to be uh, engraving. So like I'm gonna be using the F1, but you could also pick the P2. Uh, in fact, let's, let's do the P2. And it's a 55 watt laser. And you can do, uh, you can use cut, score, engrave. And what is really cool is this bitmap engrave, uh, bitmap image engrave. And what this is, is it's really gonna optimize, if you input an image, it's gonna optimize for the best depth and uh, color variance, although it's gonna be grayscale, uh, but it's gonna really look the best if you pick that option. So you can do that, and then you would hit open in XCS. I'm not connected to the P2 right now. Uh, I will be in a little bit, but let's go to the F1. And for the for this material, it's gonna automatically default to the to blue light instead of the infrared. Um, and then it's automatically gonna have the bitmap image engrave for the best option. So I can open that in XCS. It closes that window and opens up right here. So now you see that it's got six millimeter pine plywood. And then if I wanted to select these here and I wanna engrave these, I can go into this easy set panel now. So you should note that when I was in beta 2.0, uh, I had a couple errors when I selected the easy set panel where the one click settings didn't populate, uh, but in most of them, it, it did work. So uh, I think this is just a glitch that they're trying to work out with the beta testing before it gets released out to the public, because I know that that would be super frustrating. Uh, it was even frustrating with, with uh, testing that I was doing. But uh, I think all those glitches should be fixed by the time 2.0 gets released. So it's really cool. You'll be able to check out what it's going to look like before you even run the engraving. Now it's time to talk about what a lot of people were complaining about with the S1 when it came out. The S1 doesn't have a camera, but it uses a pinpoint positioning system. There's a bunch of people that just couldn't understand why the S1 came out without a camera. And although I found the pinpoint positioning to work really well, I tend to agree that a camera is nice to have, especially after using the P2. I've done videos on both of those machines. If you wanna check them out, they'll be in the video description below. Well, in an answer to those requests, Xtool came out with a feature called Snapshot Preview. It's not as great as having an integrated camera into the P2, like the P2 has, but this does help solve some issues. So let's check it out. So to capture a snapshot uh, with the Snapshot Preview, you can take virtual snapshots of your design on the materials you're working with. 
It's like taking a picture of your project before you make any permanent changes. You start by positioning your material on the work area of the S1. Once you have your design loaded into XCS 2.0 software, you're ready to go. Now it's a bit clunky and there's a lot of steps to go through to do something the P2 already does flawlessly. But if you already have an S1 and you want a camera feature, this is a good solution for you. Earlier I mentioned the F1 Ultra pre-release. I'll be doing a couple of videos on that machine when it arrives, so be sure you're subscribed if you're interested. But let me cover a few of the highlights of that machine. From now until May 28, you can make a deposit of $100 toward your machine and get $1,000 off the machine. The F1 Ultra is a fiber and diode dual laser with the ability to cut and engrave all kinds of metals and other materials. In their launch video, Xtool showcased a really cool conveyor for the machine, which expands on the capabilities of the laser way beyond traditional fiber lasers. And by using the smart fill function, it looks like that it will be one of the best lasers on the market. I'm really excited about the F1 Ultra, and if you're interested in it, check out the link in the description to get signed up for the pre-order and save $1,000, which brings the machine only to $37.99. Uh, I also encourage you to check out these videos right here to learn more about these lasers. Thanks for watching.